Thank you for coming by and watching this video. If you enjoy this video or feel you've benefited from it, consider going to patreon.com forward slash newbiehack and support these efforts. You'll have access to 20 of my latest videos that hasn't been published on YouTube yet. To review what we've done so far, in our main.c, we have our standard include file that includes the typical registers for this particular microcontroller and register names and specifics about the registers. And we include also the LCD, the LCD functions dot header file that we created. From this header file, we have some new commands that we can use. Initialize the ports for the LCD. We should probably put LCD in front here so we can keep the same nomenclature that we're using. And then we are sending some commands to set up the LCD. And then we set we we send some characters to the LCD. In the last video, I talked about these commands not actually working correctly, but I think they are because I think that when we saw the ABC from the initial function functioning of the LCD, I believe that was from a remnant of the last program that was inside of the microcontroller because what I had was a for loop that was incrementing the character from A all the way to 10 characters past that. And when I was plugging it in with the LCD plugged in, it was able to grab the first few characters from that program because it was going so slow anyway. And by the time I actually flashed the microcontroller for this program, it was able to grab about three of those characters. And apparently it looks like it doesn't even need these commands. If you looked at the, the display, it's still, it was still able to output the ABC even without the commands before that. But I'm going to keep these commands in because, you know, the data sheet requires them or states that the LCD should have them in. And we might want to clear the display and, and do a uh, certain or take advantage of certain features of the of the LCD, like specifying whether the cur cursor should be on or off. So today I want to, instead of sending characters individually, I would like to send them as a string. If you've watched my previous videos for the AVR and how I explained the sending a string to the LCD, I started to introduce the idea of pointers. But I want to address a comment that I saw on that video and it says, why can't we use arrays? And we could, but I think arrays are a little bit less efficient because it uses too much memory to store the information because you have to specify how many array elements that it requires. And when you declare that array, you have to declare a specified number of, let's say spaces for the characters. So with the array, and you declare the array, let's say 10 characters, and then you can have that equal to 10 characters. But you're always having to deal with this 10, and that doesn't give us any wiggle room. And when you use pointers, pointers are just pointing to a specific memory location. which are called addresses in programming terms. So in the microcontroller, you're gonna have a specified location for memory. Memory is actually the sort of the main component in microcontrollers and computers. And there's addresses for almost everything and to control everything, even registers and things like that. And the memory is like little boxes. You can think of it as like a grid. I'm not going to go into the specific way that the memory is organized. I don't think really that's important at this point. It's hard enough to get your mind around, at least mine, the idea of pointers and memory locations. So let's say this is just a portion of that memory. And we specify a character pointer, which is specified like this. And we store a set of characters, 
within that car declaration, that car data type, it really is only specifying the location of the first character because the car data type is only one character. It can't hold all of this. But by putting the pointer there, it is specifying where the first one is located. So let's say that in our memory, the, the location is here. And by using the pointer feature of the C programming language, it specifies this location, but it also not just specifies the location, it knows what's inside of that location. And this data type, of, of course, is going to have some kind of name. Let's say we call it text. Well, text is the actual variable that we use to access this location. And if you increment text, text equals text plus one, then it will know what's inside of this location. So this is plus one, and this is plus two, and so on. The cool thing about specifying pointers over arrays is that it doesn't really matter how many memory locations or you don't have to declare a specified number of locations because at the very end, it will add a null character here. So we can have a loop that iterates through all of these locations, the zero, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then at the end, we just all we do is we either test for null or like what I did in the AVR programming, we may we see if the the character within that location is more than zero, is greater than zero. I know that way works because I've already done it. I haven't really done a iteration that tests for null in this particular type of context. So I may try that. So let's go back to the program and add another function into our LCD functions. So we're going to go to the LCD functions and let's go to the end here where we actually send a character and send it and send an instruction. So we're going to add another one. We're not going to, this function doesn't need to return anything. So it's going to be a void and we'll call it LCD send a string. So what we're going to pass in is a car data type and a pointer. And this is where we name the variable that we're going to be using within this function. And here we can say string of characters. I'm actually using the same variable that I used in the previous LCD strings video for the AVR series. Within this function, we're going to be sending a character multiple times until it gets to the end of that string. So we're going to go ahead and use the LCD send a character. And then it's going to be waiting for a particular character. So we're going to be using the string of characters. We're going to use the pointer because it needs to know where it's located and what is inside of it. string of characters. Okay, so that's actually looking at the very first character. So if I actually ran it right now, it'll only, if we're using the word newbie hack, it will only show the first character n and then the function will be completed. Let's see what it would look like if we did this in longhand. So if you wanted to show this without a loop, then we can do this. You might find it strange that I'm putting the plus plus on the left hand side of this variable. And that's because this is actually the first character. And if I put a plus plus on the left hand side of it, it would increment first. So it would be actually looking at the second character. If I put the plus plus on the right hand side, then it would look at the first character and then add one to itself after it has passed in the first character. If I do it this way, then I'm gonna to have to do that way all of it. So we just need a way to do this multiple times and stop when it finds that null character. If we wanna try using the null as the condition, let's go ahead and see what, what, what that would be. So let's use the while. We'll take this line and put it inside the while loop. And this is exactly the way it needs to look inside the loop. It still needs to be in this form with the plus plus at the end. So the first time it goes through the loop, the first instance of this, the first iteration, it'll only be considering the pointer and string of characters and not the plus plus. So it'll look at the very first character. So what do we put inside here? Well, why don't we just put this inside there? Because what I've learned is that a condition is true if it is either non-zero or non-null or not null. 
in the ANSI C language. So if this is not zero and it doesn't contain a null character, it should be able to be true and go into the loop. So let's actually see if this works. Let's go ahead and put this into the main.c. I want to do something different. What I want to do is I want to do the, the character by character on the first line and then the string on the second line. So I'm going to put this above the go to next line. You know, I don't actually know what this one does. I'm going to go look this up real quick. I believe this actually clears the display, so I'm going to put that in here. I'm not sure if we actually need this because we're turning on the display and cursor here and it may actually do the do the clearing as well, but let's keep this in here. All right, so I'm going to introduce the new function. I didn't save the file yet. Let me save. Send a string and then we're going to send the string newbie hack in lowercase so we can actually see the difference. I'll just disable spell checking at the moment. Okay, I'm going to plug it in and I will flash the microcontroller. Oh, I need to build it first to see if I actually don't have any errors. Okay, let's flash the microcontroller and see what happens. It worked. That is awesome. First try and I actually didn't know if it was going to work or not. And it looks like the condition that searches for a null or only accepts either a valid character actually works. So that's awesome.